Um, but it's always nice to, to know you've got a backup in yep. competitions like the finals. Yes. Target number one, Cerullo Al Mario. And Chen Ying Wang Hor, better known as Angie, from Sydney Olympic Park Archers. On target number two, they're the Bear Busters. It's Debbie Tremelling and Con Goik. Our official for this match will be Phil Gill. Four archers, start your engines, head on forward. We'll get this gold medal match started as soon as possible. It looks like the team on target number one, the newbies, have decided to shoot first in this gold medal match. And she opens with a seven. Cerullo opens with a five, just out of the six ring. You see, they definitely take time in their setup. Yes. But a very quick shot. Yes. Yeah, I was just thinking that about the amount of time he was taking preparing his fingers on the string. It looks very comfortable. Debbie Tremelling opens with a five. Con with a nine. Interesting. The, uh, the newbies are just that. Um, both Angie and uh, Sorello have uh, only been shooting for about 12 months. Uh, well, six months in Sorello's case. So, uh, Angie's second arrow is a, a four. Four points. It's very comfortable out there. Absolutely. It doesn't seem to phase them, I don't think. Just the day on the race. Yeah. Same process, you're just shooting a different target. Cerullo with a six. Looks like 22 total score for target number one. I think the biggest thing with their bow is uh, against recurve. Dead with a four. Uh, is you anchor on your, uh, under your jaw line for uh, recurve. 18 points in total uh, so far for team, to team one target number two. Your marking point your arrow above your lip in their oh, okay. Using your and with that eight, step. they've taken that set to uh, those two set points. I'm trying to get it I believe they take that set by four points in total. So it's definitely archery, yeah. just repeating the process every time. Yes, it would appear that it doesn't matter which, uh, uh, whether it's bare bow or recurve or, uh, or compound, it's about the process. And uh, repeat, repeat, repeat. I think uh, I always thought of archery as it's a very individual sport because you're competing against yourself. Yes. Uh, so you may have a competitor next to you, but as much as it is, it's, it's competing and making sure you're doing the right things and you're doing your setup. Yeah. Um, you're continuing your process because you're the only one that can really change the outcome. So from a, a, an international point of view, and whether it's uh, you know, the Olympics or World Cup, uh, you know, I mean... How much does that change that pressure compared to like a shooting at a club, you know, it, 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 or, or shooting in a local competition? Does it change much for you? Um, yes and no. Uh, obviously, yeah, you're shooting 
just a, a, in a different area, different country, uh, but it's the same distance. Um, and it's just different people next to you on the shooting line. But obviously you're always going to have that pressure system of you competing against the world, um, yep. representing your, your country and trying to do the best you can. Um, so there's always going to be that, that outcome. Uh, but it's also you don't get as much match play experience in Australia. Oh, for sure. So yeah. that's a big, a big issue with uh, final sort of finals venues. Yes. <coughs> so sometimes when you go to a finals venue overseas, it's it's very overwhelming. It's cameras in your face and things like that. Definitely. Angie opens with a seven. Cirillo with a six. Thirteen points for their first two arrows. Deb opens with a six. Con with a five. So a two-point lead. A two-point lead is Archers on target number one in this second set. Some factors that um, you might not notice that would be an issue for archers would be in a finals venue, you've got a, a wall behind the targets that's not usually there, can change the depth. The Seven position, points, okay. Um, and it can can either appear to be further away with the target or closer. Um, uh, a pro is also having the, the flags running down the side of the, the target, so you've got more ideas of how the, the wind is affected. Rather, rather, just think, rather than just affected the Perfect score from Cirillo. Yeah, so instead of using just the target flag, um, you have more. Yeah. So that's 30 points out of possible 40 there for team on target number one. Debbie has a five for her second arrow. Points. Eight points. See, he Despite that solid shot to finish there from Con, I do believe the set shot. points will go to the to archers on target a number one. Again, folks, this is yeah. the bare bow division. There is no sights on these bows, no stabilizers, no aids to these archers. Unlike the compound bow, which lets off and has a specific draw length, the bare bow can be drawn back to any distance, and as you pull it back, the poundage increases. Yeah, as Rob was just touching on, there, there are uh, very specific rules around bare bow as well, uh, as I understand it, that there's a, um, a, uh, a ring that the bow must fit through um, for it to be legal, so uh, although you, know, you can see by looking at the bows there that they've got some weights on them in certain positions, but uh, uh, they can't protrude over a certain distance. So, help the stability of the shot. Yes. Because uh, you don't have, have all the weight coming back towards your face, um, and when you let go, your front arm isn't as stable as it would be if you had uh, weight further forward. Yes. Um, and it's a bit harder to control. Yeah, well, as we'll see on the recurvers later, um, the uh, long um, stabiliser bars that they'll have with various weights on them, and the V-bars behind.
six points to open for Manji. Cirillo with an eight. So 14 points for the first two arrows from the team on target number one. Deb opens with an eight as well. Anything in the red or better will give them the lead in this set. Say before to uh, Damien about having some <coughs> commentary, and it's a nine, so they'll have a lead of well, three points. To shoot, With two hours you know, to go in this set, just needs to shoot, just needs an eight, or just needs a go. Probably wasn't happy with that shot, you know, and, and all those things that you, you, you're not normally hearing when you're shooting just at the range. It, uh, it would be interesting for many, I think, and different. Angie with a seven. Yeah, it's almost putting ideas in your head. Yes. Taking your, your focus away from your process. Yeah. Um, you might be hearing it from your own voice in your head, but it's different when someone else is saying to you before you're shooting or yeah. just about to shoot. And Rob being an archer so really himself. Seven as well. Rob being an archer himself, I'm sure, has probably <laughs> has been there, been there before. Those always things. For the number one, I'll tell you what target number one. But that's yeah, it. When I was younger, we did a lot of uh, distraction training. Having Two points for Deb. Commentators while you're shooting and then trying to see what, what triggers you yes. uh, and what you need to work on, what weaknesses. Yeah. Um, it's all about focus, isn't it? For me, it was uh, voices from people I, I know really well. A high point. So if I heard them in the crowd or, or something like that, it would draw my attention. Um, it would be difficult <laughs> to, to concentrate. It's uh, my first uh, youth nationals with my kids, so I uh, got in trouble because they could hear me uh, laughing. And then I was a long way away, but I was obviously laughing very loud, so I was uh, I was told that I had to be quiet. I, I get what you're saying. Yeah, I always had. Um, it was hard to, to tell my dad, but it's hard to say. Can you can you leave me alone or? or don't be in my, my eye line when I'm in competition. Um, but, but he's your dad. I he's know. your dad, Alan. And he, I know he's supporting me, and I know he's there, but I can't see him when I'm shooting. <laughs> but that is also a, uh, a special thing too, isn't it, about you know, families and the support that they give um, to uh, to all our late archers and our up and coming. So I've spoken to a couple of parents of, uh, of uh, the younger archers, you know, who... who Heavily invested, you know, um, in their kids, as, as as most parents are in lots of different sports. But uh, but I think one of the things about archery too is being an individual sport as, as opposed to a team sport. It's it's a little bit different. Yeah, I definitely wouldn't have been able to make it to two Olympics without my my family support. Yeah. Yeah. Um, probably would have given it up. Just uh, <laughs> it's too hard. Or yes, yeah. yeah so it's definitely. Helpful. Lots of sacrifices yeah. all around. All right, we're on target number two. We're shooting first in this fourth and final set of this competition. They're bear busters. Let's see how they go, if they can tie this up. It's always nice to see if we can get another shoot off. <laughs> Makes it really exciting. Well, nice for us, maybe not nice for the yes. guys. <laughs> I can imagine that. <laughs> Good experience. Of Everything's course. good experience. Of course. Eight points to open. Another eight from Deb. Eight points as well. Sixteen total for the first two arrows. Just like with the compound, the mixed teams have got 80 seconds to shoot their, um, their four arrows. It's pretty easy calculations. 20 seconds an arrow, they're about. And you have the six. Not 
most mixed teams we tend to have the, the male archer second. Um, it just tends to, to happen that way. Okay. Um, yeah. It also depends if uh, they know. Like, Cirilla with a nine. Previous match. I believe there's a one point lead to the team to on target number two. The Bear there. Busters with two hours to go. And always give information to your, to, to your teammate. Yeah. Where to aim or what the wind's Five doing. points from Deb Tremelli. Well, you see that particularly in not just mixed teams, but in teams where you've got three archers competing and, and how they're talking. You know, and, and sometimes one can be looking through a scope while the next one's lining up to shoot and what's the one shooting. <coughs> Yeah, definitely in an international team. Con with uh, an eight, team. possible seven. You've got one giving you your technical advice, um, what would help you when you're shooting. Yeah. You've got that should be 29 arrow. points in total for the team on target number two. One always changing the, if the wind turns yes. around. You've got all the information that your team's supporting you with. Four points. But because mixed teams is quite new, um, you don't see archers talking with their, their teammate yes. um, but it's, it's always helpful I think they rely a bit more on the coach in this in a sense eight points can work well with the team I believe that's 27 27 points for the archers on target number one so See whether we're having to shoot off on that. Yeah. Well, I've lost track. <laughs> it's difficult here because you can't see where I'm sitting in target one. I've got a view of target two. Usually I go off the body language as well, but it's it's very tough with these teams. Yeah. Heading for a shoot off. I think the current target two might just have it. It's good to see. <laughs> I like it when both teams are quite competitive. All right, here we go again. We have yep. a tie on the field for the gold medal yep. match. These beer bow archers trading blows. So we'll have a uh, target change, just in case there's a measure required. So again, we'll go to this uh, shoot-off format. The uh, field crew will change the target faces. Archers will shoot one arrow each. The highest scoring team will win, unless they tie there again. And then it's going to be the arrow closest to centre for victory. You can see some of the nerves coming out, I think. <laughs> Preparing yourself. It's always the waiting. And this, and this would be, I suppose, the uh, the real key about whether you choose to shoot first or not, um, in, you know, in, in the uh, in the match, because uh, then if you shoot first uh, at the start of the match, you shoot first for the uh, for the one arrow shoot off, and most people or teams would prefer to shoot first. I expect get the arrow down there, you know, make you know, try and make a statement if you like on the target face. I think as well as if you do really well under pressure, um, you want to shoot second. Okay. Because if, if they put down a really good arrow, you've got that extra pressure to really okay. um, urge you on. Uh, but myself, I really liked the, the first, first shooting. Because then you don't know what they've shot and what you need to get yes. to be able to beat them. Yeah. It's just, it's just you shooting for yourself, really, isn't it? Exactly. All right, folks, looks like our fantastic field crew have changed those target faces. If they thought there was pressure being in the gold medal match, now they've got a shoot off to win that medal. Let's see who can handle that pressure in the final arrow. Highest score or close to center for the win. There were a couple archery for the men and women. They uh, tend to use the heartbeat to the speaker system and uh, creates more pressure. Angie on target one, opening up that shoot off arrow. Angie 
Ramsey with a five, potential four liner. Deb up on target number two. With a seven. A very quick shot. So two point lead, one hour to go. Nine points, Whoa. good shot from Cirillo there. It's a possible 14 points to the team on target one. A seven to tie and eight to take this. Race to seven. It's an eight. Oh, I believe it's there. Winners. Nice shooting. <laughs> Just wait to see, folks, before we get too excited. We've already seen some interesting stuff happen today on the on the fields. That's what you want to say, the goal now, match. Yes. This match will be officially called by the judges. This clerk is down to try and face as a judge. Uh, signal once all the scoring has been taken care of and ensure that everything, everyone's happy. Hopefully we won't have the same drama that we had in the last match. Or at least for the, for the, for the compound, <laughs> it's cold. All right, the judges confirmed it. The Archers on target number two, the Bear Busters, Debbie Tremelling and Con Boyd are our gold medalists in this mixed teams final. And folks, please give a round of applause to the team, the newbies, Cirillo and Angie on target number one, taking out the silver medal in this championship. So that was a great match, folks, all the way through a tiebreaker. So I think that's one of the, the, the exciting things over the last couple of years of just seeing Bebo in its recognition uh, um, and into a situation and into a competition so that it has that difference between recurve. So, you know, recurve, which has traditionally been an Olympic sport, um, certainly World Archery, I know, are pushing to, uh, to establish compound uh, in that area as well, which would be fantastic for our compound archers because okay. that's something that they, uh, they miss out on. Yeah, definitely being recognised that space is, is definitely worth something worth, worth chasing. Um, In the bronze medal position, the team Silver Streaks, Elizabeth Hall and Mark Bartlett. In the silver medal position, it's the newbies, Cirillo Al Mario and Chen Ying Wang. And our champions for the 2022 Australian Open in the mixed teams match, the Bear Busters, Debbie Tremelling and Con Boyk. I love seeing it. <laughs> see that wind there. Please give a big round of applause to our Bebo mixed team medalists. Well, we're going to take a quick break. Again, Alice, thank you very much for your help. Safe travels home. Thank you. Uh, Once our targets are moved back to 70 metres, we will begin our...